Well, we begin today's show looking at the growing political scandal in Los Angeles. On Monday, the president of the Los Angeles City Council, Nuri Martinez, resigned from her leadership post after she was caught on tape using racist language against indigenous people in the city and for describing the black son of a city council member as a little monkey. Martinez made the comments last year during a conversation discussing redistricting with Los Angeles City Council members Kevin DeLeon and Gil Cedillo, as well as Ron Herrera, the head of the Los Angeles County Federation of Labor, who also resigned last night. It's unclear who recorded the call or who leaked it to the media, but it comes just weeks before voters head to the polls in Los Angeles to pick a new mayor. The scandal has put a spotlight on tension between Latinx and black political leaders in Los Angeles. In one part of the phone call, Nuri Martinez can be heard talking about the adopted son of fellow Democratic council member Mike Bonin. Bonin's white. His son is black. She accused Bonin handling his son as if he were a, quote, accessory like a purse, and she describes the boy as changuito, which translates as little monkey. Listen carefully. It's like the oddest thing. It's like black and brown on this float, and then there's this, this white guy with this little black kid who's misbehaved. Este niño has no. He's. They're not doing it. Yeah, no. They're not doing. The kid is bouncing off the effing walls on the float, practically tipping it over. There's nothing you can do to control him. Why is it changuito? And I'm just like, oh my god. They're raising him like a little white kid, which I was like. This kid is a beat down. Like, let me let me take him around the corner and then I'll bring him back. Yeah. Ven it's back. a pinch. Something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the fourth button. So, anyways, getting back to redistricting. In another part of the call, Nuri Martinez is heard talking about Los Angeles District Attorney George Gascon, saying, quote, F that guy, he's with the blacks. Martinez is also heard, along with Gil Cedillo, commenting about indigenous people from Central America that live in Koreatown. She describes them as short, dark people, then uses the Spanish term, tan feos, to say they're ugly. Yeah, that's called Cape Town. That's yes. I see a lot of little short, dark people. Yeah, puro, puro yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you know, Cielo fights against the racism and discrimination uh, against indigenous people on a daily basis. But um, it was not shocking. I'm shocked that people are shocked that this actually happens. But indigenous people go through this every single day in different uh, uh, parts of, uh, of their daily lives, in schools, in hospitals, on the streets. So her inciting hate against indigenous people has a direct impact on their lives at a school, at a hospital. And we'd still want her to resign. I mean, she resigned the presidency, but uh, a person like Nudie, like Kevin, and said that you cannot continue representing uh, in, uh, representing us as Angelinos, because you're inciting hate against um, our African-American relatives, indigenous people, um, it's unacceptable. And Odilia, could you talk about the Oaxacan community in Koreatown and how it was brought into uh, this discussion of voting redistricting? Well, um, Koreatown, um, it has a lot of Zapotec community. Uh, it is, I would say, one of the most um, beautiful places because there's so much diversity there. But my entire family lives in Koreatown. Indigenous people live in Koreatown. Um, and that area, uh, you know, it's uh, part of Cedillo's area. And, and this, I mean, I mean, for me, it is um, the comments were were disgusting. But that that area of Koreatown, there's a lot of population of indigenous Oaxacan, but also, you know, uh, they fail to recognize that we contribute to to Koreatown, and we're not only in Koreatown, we're all over. But because that redistricting redistricting is happening on that conversation, you know, it is unfortunate of what they think of us, and also how they're gonna what what services they would provide or, or, or what yeah. is it, you know, how, how is it that they're going to serve a group of people that they talk so uh, awful about, right? Um, so I think um, uh, you have to come yeah, to Korea I, I want, yeah, yeah, I wanted to ask you also, you mentioned uh, a Councilman Gil Cedillo. I, I've known Gil Cedillo for more than 30 years. Uh, and I actually tried to reach him. I got I got him over the phone last night and uh, and asked him about this horrendous uh, th these this horrendous conversation. He was uh, remorseful, but uh, at the same time he admitted that he should have spoken out uh, and uh, and tried to stop the council president from some of her remarks. Can you talk about the fact here Gil Cedillo has been a champion of, uh, of the undocumented now for decades in Los Angeles? Uh, the, the contrast between his actions and his words and his uh, the bias that he showed, especially toward the Oaxacan community in, in this tape? Well, I have to tell you, I've known Cedillo uh, as well for many years. And uh, actually, last, last year after that conversation, um, I saw him at a restaurant. And the first thing he told me, you look so festive today. So I'm not surprised. I don't. I, he might be remorseful, but I don't think it, it, it comes from his heart. Um, and um, said so. Now I, I. I mean, he has been a champion of like the of a driver's license for undocumented people, but his actions shown other. Uh, I mean, these words. But it's it, it's not uncommon for the broader Latino movement to make this comment, right? We go back to there are things that you do. For example, support the driver's license. But you're thinking as a broader Latino. You're not thinking, oh, this is going to benefit indigenous people. Because that's where we have an issue. Like, we are lumped into being Latinos, every single one of us. No one's taking into account that within the Latin American continent, there is people that speak other languages. We are different. Uh, our traditions are different. Our culture is different. Our language is different. We're not part of the Latino co uh, community. So there, he just continued what we have been living for hundreds of years as indigenous people, this racism and this discrimination. It is very common uh, for people to call us these, these names, right? I'm not going to re repeat them because they're very harmful. What am I going to tell my 12-year-old when he's hearing all these news about indigenous Oaxacan? So... 
Uh, I wanted to bring Melina Abdullah into the conversation. Um, she is the co-founder of Black Lives Matter Los Angeles. Um, Professor Abdullah, your response to what has taken place, and if you could comment overall about tensions between the black and Latino community in Los Angeles. Sure. So, um, I appreciate Sister Odilia also for pulling together black and indigenous people yesterday. So, the press conference that was held included Cielo, but Black Lives Matter was also invited. I think that that should be the narrative of what Los Angeles really is, that in community, black folks, indigenous folks, brown folks do work together to challenge racism, to challenge oppression. And that's really the story of Los Angeles. What we saw happen, what we heard happen, um, is an indication of some elected leaders that they intend to simply replace white supremacist oppressors with brown faces. So, brown faces that enact the same kind of oppressive policies um, and use the same kind of oppressive language as white folks who used to hold power, who once held power um, and are on their way out. Um, and so, I think that's what we're seeing happening. What's harmful to me is, yes, it was really hurtful and problematic to listen to this language. And I definitely reached out to Mike Bonin. Um, as a black mother, you know, I felt very hurt for his son. His son is, at the time, was two years old. And to talk about any black child in the way that they were um, spoken about is painful. Um, but beyond the pain and beyond the hurt is also this um, effort to really sideline black power, to oppress black power. We have to remember that what that meeting was about was redistricting in the city of Los Angeles. So these four so-called leaders got together and they were plotting, planning, conspiring to undermine black power in the city of Los Angeles. And so my assessment of it is that Black folks and brown folks and indigenous folks and everybody who wants a just and equitable and fair and um, transparent and democratic system in Los Angeles has to come together and demand that all four of them resign. So not just Ron Herrera, who stepped down, not just Nuri Martinez stepping down from her leadership position, but the three city council members must step down from their city council seats. And then we must undergo a fundamental culture shift within both the political sphere, but also within organized labor, where I'm also a delegate to the LA County Federation of Labor, where Ron Herrera was president. Um, finally, last night, more than 60 black leaders came together on an emergency call. We stayed up until the wee hours of the morning and came up with a list of demands that demands that, yes, all four of them be removed from their posts, that they step down from their posts. But also, we want more than that. We want the presidency to go to Mike Bonin, for the city council presidency to go to Mike Bonin um, for the remainder of the term. We want to make sure that no elected leader um, is permitted to carry out any leadership position who says anything that's anti-Black or racist or homophobic, which we haven't yet talked about. Um, and we want to make sure that this culture shift within the L.A. County Federation of Labor means that there's an opening up of seats and leadership positions to Black folks who are in labor. And that also includes the removal of police associations from the Federation of Labor. So there's lots that we want beyond the resignation of these folks. This is more than just hurt feelings. This is about how this has negatively impacted Black power in the city. And we also want an investigation into that. How did this impact the lines that were drawn as they were um, plotting and planning about redistricting? And, Professor Abdullah, you mentioned uh, that we haven't talked about the homophobic character. These conversations reveal a bias that was anti-Black, anti-Indigenous, uh, uh, anti-gay. And also, uh, 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 you have mentioned that you believe it's also classist. Could you talk about that? 
Yes, so they also, if you listen to the tape, are talking about renters in the city. Renters make up the majority of Los Angeles. We know that Black folks are being pushed out of the city of Los Angeles. We've seen um, really kind of a, a, a out, out, uh, uh, running out of the city. Um, black folks and poor folks are being run out of the city because of the gentrification that's being that's taking place. They were speaking negatively about renters. They were speaking negatively about our attempt to organize. In fact, our um, hugely successful attempts to organize. So Kevin De Leon is on that tape talking about the Wizard of Oz and how we make it seem like there's 250 of us, but there's really only 25 black people yelling. Well, let me say there were more than 25 black people yelling last night outside of Kevin De Leon's house. There were more than 25 black people yelling um, night before last outside of Nuri Martinez's house. And there will be more than 25 black people yelling this morning as hundreds of us um, prepare to go to Los Angeles City Council meeting to demand that they all step down from their city council seats. Many indigenous people are in the Labor Federation that Ron Herrera has now just resigned from. Uh, Odilia, we just have 30 seconds, but the resources you've been demanding for the crisis of how people deal with migration in this country, you as a leader of the indigenous community in Los Angeles that has been slandered in these calls, in this, in, in this conversation? Well, uh, you know, um, w with the situation with Ron Her Herrera, um, it is unfortunate that he did not acknowledge the contribution of indigenous workers and went on to allow these awful remarks against indigenous people. And this racism against black, against indigenous people, against uh, L the LGBTQ needs to stop. And we need, and we continue to demand that Nuri, Kevin De Leon, and Cedillo resign. And yes, we are headed to City Hall today, along with our black relatives. Odilia Romero, we want to thank you for being with us, co founder and executive director of Cielo, Indigenous Communities in Leadership, an Indigenous women led group in Los Angeles, and Melina Abdullah, co founder of Black Lives Matter Los Angeles, organizes globally with BLM Grassroots, professor of Pan African Studies at California State University in Los Angeles, speaking to us today from San Juan, Puerto Rico. Coming up, a jury in Utah has acquitted two animal rights activists who faced years in prison for rescuing two sick piglets from a Smithfield Foods factory farm in Utah. Stay with us.